Hey, what's up guys? Nick here. Happy New Year and welcome to the first video of 2020, unboxing the Insta360 ONE R. Today is January 7th, which could possibly become a very important date for many people. Reason being that Insta360 released the first ever adaptive action camera. If you're wondering what that means, well, the concept is simple. One battery, one processor, and a selection of quick swapping lenses. When it comes to filmmaking, I think we can narrow down types of cameras to a few categories. Action cameras such as GoPro, DSLRs, drones, and 360 cameras. The truth of the matter is that there is a reason these types of cameras don't blend together. As of 2020, there is still no product out there for a filmmaker that does everything that you need it to. It's safe to say that it's currently impossible to go from filming an aerial image down to a DSLR and then be able to go underwater or create similar action cam perspectives all in one camera. It just doesn't exist yet. Or so we thought. Even though I don't see that happening anytime soon, I believe that Insta360 just made the greatest leap in the right direction. Looking at the specs, the One R is capable of swapping between three different lenses. A 4K wide angle mod, dual lens 360 mod, and one inch wide angle mod, as they call it. So we have a battery, a processor, and three different lenses capable of shooting standard 4K action camera type footage, 5.7K 360 footage, and somehow, a 1 inch wide angle Leica lens capable of shooting 5.3K video in 19 megapixel raw stills. If you're wondering what the difference between the 4K wide angle mod and the 1 inch mod is, the best way to describe it is that the 4K wide angle is what comes standard on most action cameras, while the 1 inch mod offers creators a 5.3K 1 inch sensor to achieve image quality and dynamic range, similar to a DSLR camera. The 4K wide sports a 16.4 millimeter angle lens with an aperture of f2.0. The dual lens 360 with a 7.2 millimeter angle lens at f2.8 and the one inch wide with a 14.4 millimeter angle lens at f3.2. All in all, with the type of sensor this camera has, those images create a 35 millimeter equivalent focal length. Here's a deeper look at the specs each lens provides. Something to keep in mind is that even though the camera has been announced, I was informed that this is still a pre-production version of the hardware, firmware, and the app, so things may change. But so far, while looking at the specs, I'd have to say that I'm most impressed by the ability of the 1 inch wide angle lens to shoot 5.3K. It is unfortunately not a raw image, but like I said, this is a big step in the right direction. I most likely will be making a video covering each lens individually to give you a deeper look into what they all look like and what they're capable of, but for now, here are specs regarding the resolution of each lens. The 4K wide angle mod can shoot 4K 60 frames per second, 2.7K 100 frames per second, and 1080p 200 frames per second. The 360 mod can shoot up to 5.7K 30 frames, and the 1 inch mod shooting 5.3K 30 frames, 4K 60, and 1080 120. The one thing I would like to see on this list would be the ability to shoot in 24 frames per second in each resolution available. The only lens capable of doing so is the 360 mod at 5.7K, which is still pretty good. The other lenses shoot with a minimum of 30 frames per second. Not the end of the world for an action camera, but there are moments when 24 frames per second is a plus to have. As far as video coding, we can expect an H.264 and H.265 format for the 4K wide angle and 1 inch wide angle, and H.264 for the dual lens 360 mod. A bitrate up to 100 megabytes per second is pretty standard for action cameras and is included. The camera shoots in the auto setting, but is capable of shooting in manual mode for those that want a bit more control like myself. Different video modes are available for the different lenses attached. In summary, the camera can shoot standard video, HDR, time lapse, time shift, and bullet time. If you'd like a better understanding of what those video modes are, let me know down in the comments and I'll make a video covering those topics. While sitting in the launch meeting, there were rumors of external audio recording. This has been such a huge problem with GoPro in the past. They basically gave up on the production of their 3.5mm mic adapter which left a lot of customers, including myself, pretty frustrated. I will be making a separate video pertaining to the audio in this camera, and if what they're saying is true, it could solve a lot of people's problems. In regards to battery life, I heard numbers close to one hour, but as mentioned before, those numbers could change, hopefully for the better. Okay, so jumping into the software. This is where it gets a little crazy, and in a good way. If you've ever edited footage, you know how long it can take to find the right moments. Insta360 managed to develop a feature called AutoFrame, which is an AI-powered 
computer vision algorithm that can identify the best parts of any 360 video and then recommend that to you. There's still plenty of choice, but the auto frame feature helps you quickly narrow down those shots worth considering and then it does the reframing for you. Keep in mind that it's not going to be perfect, but I saw the feature in action and was genuinely impressed. This could cut down editing time in half. Okay, so going back to software, the camera is waterproof to depths of five meters, 16.4 feet, straight out of the box and a dive case enables descents down to 60 meters, 197 feet. Voice control is a must nowadays and is of course included. Along with the AI feature auto frame, the camera is also capable of using AI software to do a deep track, which tracks the subject's movement and automatically reframes the shot to best follow your subject. If you didn't think that was crazy enough, well, then you are in luck. The camera also allows you to do this in real time. Yes, you can literally say mark that to the 1R while you're filming and the camera will track your subject and then create an automatically reframed shot when you begin editing. I saw a demonstration of this while I was in the launch meeting and they used a snowboarder and literally just said mark that and it tracked the subject surprisingly very well. When I was sitting in the launch meeting here in LA, I was a bit overwhelmed with all the features that this camera has. Even while creating the outline for this video, I had to cut certain things out to make it hopefully more understandable. Insta360 really is working hard to create a product that can do everything a filmmaker or creator needs. I look forward to creating an in-depth comparison to GoPro's line of cameras, testing image quality, internal stabilization, and color grading ability. This is more of an overview than a full product review, but I'll be installing the firmware they provided me and making a more in-depth review regarding this camera. So far, I must say I am impressed. Whether you're a motorcycle rider, filmmaker, snowboarder, athlete, or just enjoy capturing memories, this is a camera I would consider investing in. I always try to be transparent, so I will say that if you are interested in learning more and potentially purchasing this camera, please do so via the link in the description. I receive a small commission from the purchase, which in turn supports the channel and allows me to create more videos. Regardless of this being a sponsored video, I only bring products to the channel that I feel are worth watching or investing in. That's it for today's video. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.